We can also talk about a sprinter coming out of the starting block. When a sprinter is ready to start a race, he puts on the track these pieces of metal that are usually at an angle like this, and his feet rest against him. In this case, he's going to run taking off in this direction. So his feet are here. That's one foot, and that's another foot. And so his legs might look like this. He's And he's leaning over, probably with his hands on the ground and his head up he's ready to ready to take off and as soon as the gun goes off to start the race he pushes with his feet to propel himself forward well how does he push he pushes back with his feet on the starting blocks and that makes him go forward and that's an action reaction pair of forces there the force of his feet backward on the starting block and the force of the starting block on his feet forward that makes him go so you can state uh, the forces of Newton's third law like this. The runner exerts a force on the starting blocks to the left. The starting blocks exert a force on the runner to the right. And that's what makes the runner accelerate out of the starting blocks. Now why don't the starting blocks accelerate to the left? Because they're fastened into the ground or into the track. The runner is not fastened in. He, he, he's free to move and so when he pushes to the left on the starting blocks he ends up moving to the right or in this case he pushes back on the starting blocks he ends up moving forward ordinary walking actually works in a similar manner if you have the floor here and you're just walking along you walk forward by exerting a backward force on the floor with your feet imagine if you have on really really slippery shoes then when you try to walk or run your feet are going to slide around you don't have much much grip it's harder to accelerate because you can't push off the floor if there were no friction at all you would not be able to walk it's the force of friction between you and the floor that allows you to get motion forward by pushing backward on the floor so if you're standing perfectly perfectly still you start walking by pushing backward with your feet and pushing backward on the floor causes a forward force on you. You exert a force on the floor to the left. The floor exerts a force on you to the right. A car accelerating is another good example of Newton's third law. Any car that's accelerating is able to do so because the tires turn and it's friction between the road and the tires that allow the car to accelerate. So we'll draw the car here. Okay. When when you step on the gas, the tires turn. So, and in this case, this is a Porsche and Porsches have rear wheel drive so it's the back wheel that's turning the front wheels don't propel the car the front wheels are for steering now in most modern cars today like uh, like I drive a Toyota Camry for example and that's a front wheel drive car and in the in the Toyota the the front wheels are the ones that the engine turns and makes the car go I'm gonna focus on the back wheels here because this is at least supposed to be a Porsche in the diagram and Porsches have rear wheel drive when you step on the gas it's the back tire that starts to spin and it spins in this direction and so as the tire turns the bottom of the tire right down here is trying to go this way and there's friction between the tire and the road so as it tries to go this way it's exerting a force on the road in that direction and you can tell that there's force on the road in that direction because if it's a, a gravel road and and you step on the gas really hard the tires gonna spin and gravel is going to get kick, kicked up in that direction and the fact that gravel goes flying out that way that's pieces of the road getting thrown toward the back that should be direct proof that there is a force on the road in that direction and that force is coming no doubt from the tire Newton's third law says that if the tires exert a, exert a force on the road to the left then the road exerts a force on the tires to the right and that is the force that makes the car go forward. 
all of that force is transmitted through the material of the tires. So tires have to be very sturdy. All that force actually goes through the treads and through the sidewalls of the tire. And that's what makes the car accelerate forward. And we can also talk about a spacecraft maneuvering. When they went to the moon, the, the top part of the Apollo rockets was what was called the command and service module. And the service module was this cylindrical shaped piece. And then on top of it was kind of this cone shaped section here. And this part up front, what they called the command module, or the CM, that's where the people sat. And then in the back here, what they called the SM, the service module, or the whole thing together was sometimes called the CSM, the command and service module. Um, in, the, in the back part was just equipment and supplies. That's where they had water and oxygen and fuel. And then this was the rocket engine right here. And we've already talked about that. When they're ready to move, when they're ready to either accelerate toward the moon or accelerate back toward Earth, they fire the rocket engine and the rocket exhaust comes blasting out the back, resulting in the rocket going forward. Most of the time, though, they're not firing the rocket engine. Once they leave Earth, they, when they leave Earth, obviously, they're using the rocket engine to, to get some speed, but then they turn the engines off and they just coast to the moon for a couple of days. They just coast through space. But they might need to turn the spacecraft during that time. And all over the spacecraft are these little maneuvering jets. These are little devices, and they just would expel nitrogen gas. And they could do it in all different directions. And so, for example, if they wanted to rotate the spacecraft, they might blast a little bit of nitrogen gas out here and out here. And so gases are being blasted out this way and that way. And the result of that is force on the spacecraft this direction and that direction. And you can probably tell that a force applied this direction over here and a force applied in this direction over here together, those two forces will cause the spacecraft to rotate. And that's how they would get it to rotate or to change its orientation in any direction. They could move it forward or backward a little bit or rotate it around any axis with those little maneuvering jets. And they all work on the principle of Newton's third law. If the gases are forced this way out of the spacecraft, then the spacecraft is forced that way.